Rub up your engines. King Andrew 900 says, what's the best way to find a good used car? Word of mouth, of course. Tell your friends and everybody you know you're looking for a good used car because a lot of times uh, maybe some granny uh, can't see well anymore and she's got to sell her car. Or maybe there's an estate sale somewhere and you can get a good used car that way. You don't want to start up and just go to car lots because car lots, they're pros. If you go to a used car lot, generally the price they're asking is anywhere from three to five times what they paid for the car. So you want to find a car where they bought the car. Now, don't do this though. I've had customers say, oh, I'm going to go to a car auction and buy a used car. Don't do that unless you're a pro because there's a lot of junky cars in auctions and you might just end up buying another junky car. So don't go to an auction for that, but try privately with people and tell everybody you know. I've used Craigslist myself, but the problem with that is you got to be a pretty good mechanic because a lot of the Craigslist cars are junk and you're just going to waste your time driving around seeing one junk car after another. You want to try work of mouth first. Kenneth K says, hey Scotty, what do you think of the 2019 Nissan Altima CVT and the 2019 VW Passat? Thanks. Well, out of those two, if you had to buy one, I wouldn't buy either. But if you had to buy one, I'd buy the Volkswagen. The Nissan, they've had nothing but problems with their transmissions to begin with. And the CVTs are even worse than their regular automatic transmissions. It's kind of weird, but Nissan has a company that made the Jatco transmissions. It's, it's split off from Nissan, but it's still owned mainly by Nissan. It's called Jatco, and all their CVT transmissions are made by Jatco, and they're like the worst in the world. Even the Volkswagen transmissions are better than that. So if you had to buy one of those, I'd buy the Volkswagen, which is going to shock people because I always tell people not to buy Volkswagens, but you're doing a bad apple versus a less bad apple there. DW says, what GM vehicle would be worth buying? Okay, an old one <laughs> that was either taken care of and done over, like uh, a 57 Chevy Bel Air, or for that matter, 67 Chevy Bel Air. Those things were well made and last a long time. GM's quality control has just been going downhill for decades. There's no way out of it. They want to make as much profit as they can, and so they're making them as cheap as they possibly can, and they pay their workers as little as they possibly can, so all the people at the top and the stockholders can make a profit. It's just a bad system. I mean, they get too much into planned obsolescence and too much into lowering quality, and it's a shame, but that's the way that it goes. I mean, I learned to drive on a Chevy Biscayne. Biscayne, it was basically a cheap version of a 67 Bel Air, and those things could run forever, but not anymore. The quality is just gone. They just have lost their quality, and if you check the resale value of modern GM vehicles, man, it's low. You can pick them up used cheap. reason is they're not that well made. JDM says, Scotty. What do you think of the future of lead acid batteries will be? Will we keep buying them 10, 20, 30 years from now as a reliable source to power some uh, electronics? Well, uh, there are many different types of batteries out there, and the lead acid has been around for so long and it works. It's good for starting up internal combustion engines where you need strong, powerful batteries. Now, as a counterpoint to that, in my Triumph motorcycle, I have, I don't have a lead acid battery. It came with one and I took it out and I put in a lithium iron battery, not a lithium ion, but a lithium iron battery. And it wasn't bad for, it was just 10 bucks more than a lead acid battery. It cost me like 80 bucks. And that thing, I'm not making this up. I got a 900cc motorcycle. It can sit there for a year, not touched. And I can turn the key on, push the starter button, it'll start right up. But the problem is, it's a motorcycle. The bigger batteries, they do make lithium iron batteries that you can put in a car, but they're like $900 and more. People don't want to spend that. Maybe the technology will change and they'll get cheaper and we'll have lithium iron batteries in our cars. But who knows? For now, the lead acid batteries work quite well and they're not all that expensive, so we'll probably still be using them for quite some time. Laser Man says, Scotty, what do you think of uh, Toyota forklifts? Okay, they're fantastic forklifts. I mean, they made them in the United States for decades. The guys I know that have forklifts, they swear by the Toyotas. They just seem to run forever. The old Toyota stuff was indestructible, and that's why they sold so many of them. I mean, they made most of them. I believe it was Indiana where they made them. Those Toyota forklifts can last basically forever if people take care of them. I had a guy down the road who had a golf cart business, 
and uh, he used the forklift to pick the buff carts up to either work on them or put them in people's trucks when they took them away after he fixed them. And uh, that thing was 30 something years old. The tires were all rotten and everything, but it still ran like a clock. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.